Добрый день, уважаемые друзья, дамы и господа, уважаемые. I'm glad to welcome all of you to Moscow to this meeting of the ministers of finance and governors of central banks of the G20. We believe that our today's event is an important stage in the preparation for the forthcoming G20 meeting under Russian presidency. Obviously, the situation in the global economy requires consolidated responsible actions time when crises were isolated and local lies behind. Financial turbulations in a number of leading world economies have impact on the situation in the global economy. It is impossible to protect oneself against global processes. In a similar fashion, no one country alone is capable to deal with global problems by itself. That calls for new requirements to global financial institutions and calls for the need of close coordination in implementation of financial policy, fine-tuning of those instruments, establishment of new ones to take care of accumulated disbalances, encouraging growth in all regions of the world are the main goals of G20 under Russian presidency. At the peak of the crisis, the G20 agreed on coordinated steps and measures to support the economy, both at the national level and at the level of international organizations. It was G20 that introduced ban on trade protectionism and gave new momentum to negotiations. We came up with new principles of financial regulations. We launched negotiations on reform of the international financial institutions, IMF, in the first place. In the recent years, supporting sustainable and green growth become one of the important topics of our agenda. And that brings to the forefront of our attention high environmental standards and need to raise living standards of people. The key question we're facing today is whether G20 is going to be as efficient as dealing with long-term problems, whether we would be able to suggest such a policy that would help revitalize global economy, avoid stagnation, and achieve sustainable growth trajectory. Russia suggests that we focus the G20 attention of the key topics of the forum, that is, balanced growth and job creation. Our priorities, encouraging investment, enhancing transparency and efficiency of regulation, allows to unite all areas of G20 work to achieve our ultimate goals. As part of these priorities, we, dis we suggest we talk about capital markets development and instruments that would help finance investment and global trade. We also suggest we talk about regulation of financial sector and its infrastructure, both globally and nationally. A special place in an agenda, place promoting jobs, creating new jobs, especially for the vulnerable groups of population. I hope that your forthcoming meeting with labor ministers that is scheduled to take place this June will contribute to this endeavor. This is a novelty introduced by the Russian presidency. And please note that by introducing this new format, we are taking on board suggestions by trade union leaders that tabled this proposal some time ago. We first discussed this proposal in Los Cabos, and all of my fellow leaders supported me. We believe that the whole range of our agenda items are interdependent and complementary. Creating favorable environment for investment requires fine-tuning of financial instruments, structural reform, combating corruption. Another priority topic is closely linked to investment, which also has to do with financial group of issues, that is managing public debt. The situation remains difficult. The overall, the average debt burden in advanced economies has increased GDP. There's no clear vision of how states are to service that debt and that 
alarms investors and puts countries in the vicious circle of debt and economic crises. Only transparent and comprehensible public policies would help build confidence among the investor community. Therefore, investment, transparency and efficiency of regulation is a cutting theme, cross-cutting theme of our agenda. Russian priorities strive to achieve continuity in the discussions of the forum, will continue implementing arrangements in establishing more fair and more sustainable and resilient to risk financial system. I believe that decisions that were taken by G20 in Seoul as regards the redistribution of the quota and the IMF must be honored. We also hope that G20, during the forthcoming summit under Russian presidency would be able to agree on proposals on the new quota formula that would fully take on board the current state of affairs in the global economy. Among important steps, let me mention introduction of new banking standards and enhanced supervision on the systemically important financial institutions and shadow banking. Let me also mention fully tapping potential of the Financial Stability Board as a full-fledged international structure. Those topics and we highlighted are priorities for Russia in our domestic policy inside the Russian Federation. Yesterday, I met with OECD colleagues and discussed it at length. Recently, we've been giving growing attention to the investment growth as the key engine for the growth of the Russian economy. We are successfully conducting structural reform as part of the National Entrepreneurial Initiative. Together with business circles of our country, we are launching roadmaps to improve business environment. We are cutting administrative barriers and improving, facilitating access to financial resources. Alongside with that, we continue developing infrastructure of the stock exchange market, creating favorable environment for institutions that offer long money, long-term investment to the economy. One of very promising initiatives is the creation of mega regulator on the basis of the central bank and the federal service of financial markets. Its goal would be introducing new higher standards of financial regulation and building confidence among market participants. Traditionally, we've been given great attention to fiscal stability. In Russia, public debt is among lowest globally. We are targeting inflation constantly. Uh, comparing to many other countries, uh, for instance, those many of you are representing, remains considerably high. But it's gone down over the past few years, last year and the year before that. And I hope that this year and in the mid and long term, the positive trend will continue. Our policy will be balanced, responsible, conservative with, I mean, approach to public finance. As of this year, a so-called budget rule came into force in Russia, which reduced dependence of budget on oil prices. We are aware of our problems. One of the most important problems is the so-called high oil and gas deficit. We shall con work continue, continuously and consistently on reducing it. We shall try to make the budget process more transparent. Colleagues, during the next day and a half, you ought to discuss main fiscal and budgetary policies of leading global economy, G20 is your forum and your organization, first and foremost. It was set up on purpose to make sure that experts such as yourselves could get together, discuss issues, and came up with solutions you could propose to your leaders. I hope your work will be fruitful. And I hope as a result of this work, you will be able to come up with promising, efficient decisions and recommendations that would lay foundation of the September summit of the heads of states of G20 in St. Petersburg. Then, if I may, let me summarize this brief discussion. Well, it wasn't a discussion per se, rather a very brief presentation of the general situation, and I thank you for your contributions. His Excellency, President of World Bank, 
said something very important that will target our work and send very good s signal. He said the worst part of the crisis now lies behind. Well, God's willing, it will be reality. The worst is in the past. So, in conclusion of a very brief meeting, let me just add that the main political decisions taken at international fora and domestically are taken at the political level by heads of state, government, presidents, but when it comes to economy, any leader, be that prime minister or president, we're all dependent on your professional opinion, on your expertise when it comes with dealing with very difficult matters. I doubt any of my fellow leaders would be brave enough to argue with you when it comes to the matters that are part of your professional expertise. And those opinions, your opinions, become rationale behind political decisions. So once again, we lay great hope on your work and your cooperation. And let me give you my view, my position on the most important issue. Naturally, our German colleagues and, and I agree with him totally. The current crisis is the crisis of confidence. But lack of confidence can be explained by systemic disruptions in the previous arrangement. And investors will never be satisfied with mere words, with mere financial infusions unless we create environment that would make future crises impossible, that would prevent them from happening. So in the first place, we need to think of how we can avoid repetition of crises. At the same time, heads of state, prime ministers, presidents, always when they take decisions, have to strike the balance between what they must do and what they can do, between decisions that are needed and the possibility for their practical implementation, for various reasons, political, social, whatever. So I call on you and ask you not just to think of what it is you think is to be done, what you as professionals think is needed, but also what can really be implemented in real life, both at the national level and at the global level. So it should be both viable and possible. It should be transparent and fair, both, once again, internationally and just, socially just, for different groups of population of our countries, and I wish you every success in this endeavor. Thank you very much for coming to Moscow. Thank you for your tireless efforts aimed at resolving long overdue and important issues. Thank you and all the best to you.